So we got a new press conference. Ryan Garcia versus uh, a Japanese fighter, uh, by the sound of things. In the Bever- um, Beverly Hilton here in fabulous Beverly Ryan Garcia's last fight was his obliteration of Devin Haney. And um, we're all aware of all the controversy that followed all that stuff. It's a day early um, for U.S. fans on Monday, December 30th. Nine that was a fight. 6 p.m. That was a fight that I, to be honest with you, Powers. looking back, I do not think that I expected Ryan to win that fight. Represented today. I don't think that I expected him to win. Did I think that he could win? Yeah. Was it a great fight on paper? Yeah. Was it was it an exciting match on paper? Yeah. Um, but Ryan is pretty one-dimensional. He's not. Special. He's not very. As far as elite fighters are concerned, as far as the elite professionals are concerned, when I think of Ryan Garcia, I think of somebody who's flat-footed, who has a spectacular left hook, underutilizes his jab, um, and a boxing exhibition, and doesn't have the best defense. That's my that that's kind of the the the. World. That's kind of the image that I have of Ryan Garcia. He's he's pretty one-dimensional. He's not very. He's not overly creative. He's not um, extraordinarily. I don't I don't think that he's extraordinarily powerful when comparing himself against other elite champions in his weight class or in his surrounding weight classes. I'm not saying that he's weak by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, when you think about somebody who could really break down opponents with a varied and creative game plan, I don't think of, I don't think of Ryan Garcia. Do I like to watch him fight? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, he, he's, he's interesting to watch. He's interesting to watch. But um, on a global stage and- I, I I don't know I I because th- the thing about fighters like Ryan Garcia is that I inevitably compare him to champions of the past, and I don't think that Ryan Garcia would rate very well against um world beaters uh, of past eras who were in or surrounded his weight class. I don't. I don't think that he would measure up. I think that he would get beat down pretty easy. Um, of course, maybe I'm just being overly critical. You know, um, I, I. I don't know. I, I just. I like Ryan Garcia. I love to watch him fight. I think that overall he's good for boxing. He brings a lot of charisma and personality, and nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes things entertaining. Oh, I guess this is his opponent. I've never heard of him before. Again, it's because I'm I'm pr- pr- I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a I'm pretty much I would say a casual uh, boxing fan. So I have not ever heard of this guy. Um, I like his look though. I like fighter known as a household name in the world of combat sports and beyond. I like the swag. He's got swag. Here is King Ryan Garcia. And then here comes Ryan. Where's Ryan? Oh, there he is. Much more, you know, he's kind of embraced this. Um, he, he, he did a really good job of, I think, remarketing himself as time went on as some, you know, flawed uh, bad boy. Um, the problem with Ryan is just that, I don't know, maybe it's just something about handsome guys. I don't know. It's just very difficult when they don't have, when their looks don't mesh with the kind of behavior that they're trying to market themselves as, even though Ryan is all tatted up now and, you know, he's, you know, he's kind of presenting himself as this, uh, this bad guy. I don't know. His behavior just doesn't quite match. It just doesn't quite match with the aura that he's trying to give off. So it doesn't feel completely genuine, I guess. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and that's completely separated from his uh, boxing acumen, from his boxing ability. He's obviously world class. But um, I don't know. There's just something about Ryan. His image and his behavior conflicts conflicts with each other. Boxing royalty, the Vargas family here today.
Fernando and family, welcome. Now a few facts about this. I don't know anything about this matchup, though. I've got to do a little bit of research on his opponent. Just uh, maybe watch a few highlight videos, maybe his last few fights, just to get an idea of uh, what Ryan's putting himself up against. I see uh, Ryzen in the background. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Garcia versus Ample. To the already written Ample. And we're going to fast forward here. There's no reason for me to um, listen to all this stuff. I really just want to listen to this time, the trainer American. and the fighter. So I'm guessing this is Ample's second. Hey, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I love the Japanese language, man. I love the Japanese language. I love languages in general. It's not just Japanese language. I love languages in general. It's always so interesting, so enthralling to listen to someone communicate in a way that, that's completely foreign to you. At least to me, anyway. Hello, Mr. Trainer uh, of Amparupia. First of all, I'd like to appreciate uh, Ryzen Sakura. That emphasize S at the end. Onimas. For this opportunity and putting this fight together. Uh, my job, as always, is to make sure my fighter is prepared, fully prepared. Okay, we're going to fast forward. This is Ryan's father. We're going to listen to Ryan's father. Um, Thank you. <laughs> was a character in himself. Got this opportunity. <laughs> Uh, this is something that's going to be special. I've never been out there in Japan, but I tell you, they told me really good things about it. But my son, I know, you know, his skills are going to take him to this another level. And we're going to be totally prepared for this fight, um, God willing. And things are going to be really interesting out there. And I hope his opponent, Ampo, is ready, because I know we will. Thank you. It's in December 30th, so a New Year's fight, essentially. Okay, we can skip this. Let's go to... Is that Derek? Ryan's training with Derek. The younger brother of Ryan Garcia in attendance, Sean Garcia, today. Was Derek Ryan's trainer when he fought um, Devin Haney? Now let's hear from the coach of Ryan Garcia, a distinguished trainer, one of boxing's best. I'm, 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 maybe he was. I can't remember. What does he have to say? Yeah, so, um, I like the sweater. Be here and, um, my focus is, just like his trainer said, is to make sure that Ryan comes in Trainer of uh, Errol Spence Jr., or at least prior trainer of Errol Spence Jr. I'm not sure if Errol Spence is still training with him. I don't think he is after he was just demolished by uh, Terrence Crawford, just ran through by Terrence Crawford. I think that kind of uh, created a rift between him and Derek. If I'm, if I'm correct, I'm, I don't think that he's training with Derek anymore. Thank you so much, Derek. Now it's time to hear the opening sta statements from the two fighters in this special exhibition event, December 30th. Oh, this is an exhibition? The Demolition Man, Rukia. Okay, so, so that means Ampo has to be a champion. He, oh, oh, maybe Ampo is actually a kickboxer. My name is Rukia Ampo. Or a Muay Thai fighter or something like that. He's coming from Ryzen? Maybe? He can't be a pure boxer. He has to be multidisciplined. A cro this sounds like a crossover spectacle. He said an exhibition. That means this guy can't be a, a pure boxer. Or maybe he is. Maybe it's just a crossover event. Missing weight, alcohol, and incomplete. Lack of professionalism, no sportsmanship, no respect. Yet he dares to call himself king. On fight day, I'll show him the true code of Bushido. We we'll fight for our Tell him. legacy. Tell him, Ampo. Tell him. I bring the real Japanese samurai spirit and show him exactly. Where he belongs. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. 
I love it. I love it. <laughs> and they're all smiles. So it, it's honestly just more performative than anything. I, I, you know, you don't feel genuine uh, uh, resentment or dislike between them. There, there doesn't seem to be any kind of genuine hate. It's just performative. He's just putting on a show for the fans and for the media. That was nice, though. I like that. We always like to see that stuff from 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 our fighters and from our champions. We like to see a, a little because boxing is. All of this, what's happening right here, boxing and fighting is one thing. When you get into the ring and you perform in front of um, a frenzied crowd who wants to see blood and drama and back and forth action, that's one thing. But this right here, press conferences, it's an opportunity to sell. This is sales. And, you know, we want to see fighters who kind of embrace that mentality and understand that, you know, creating interest with a little bit of drama, creating intrigue with a little bit of controversy or a little bit of... Three months. Um, some time like that to watch this man. Well, actually, I came to watch Manny Pacquiao. I don't even know who this guy is, but uh, I'm just happy that you know I'm working with Ryzen, Famio for this amazing event. I know it's gonna be big. Um, I know in Japan they had like 40 or 60 thousand people in that arena, so I'm excited. Mm. Uh, for his words, like I said, um, it, Japanese combat sports fans are very loyal. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> he said it right back. <laughs> Know that he was trying to knock out Manny Pacquiao, it pissed me off. So, oh, that's right, Manny Pacquiao had it had a fight and, uh, lately or, or recently. Kickboxer, he's a little. I think he lost too, which makes sense. Father Time is a right now, you know, it's his first big event, or I don't, you know, Father Time will always remind you of your limitations. I'm gonna have to settle him down, knock him out, and then just enjoy my flight back home. New Year's gonna be a good time, so yeah. We're gonna be, we're gonna be putting a whooping on this boy. Yeah, pretty confident delivery. Maybe he's, maybe that confidence, that's kind of supreme confidence, comes from the fact that he knows he's not fighting someone who's a pure boxer. Maybe Ampo is uh, multidisciplined. I don't know. I gotta look this guy up. Did did he just say that? I think he just said that Ampo was the one who fought Manny pa His last fight or exhibition was against Manny Pacquiao because there's no way that Manny Pacquiao actually um, is a ranked contender anymore there's no way there's no way it had to have been an ex exhibition i've been out of the loop for for a while so i'm not sure exactly the state of manny pacquiao's career i would imagine i i would just assume that he'd retired but um manny pacquiao does love to fight that's one thing that's always made him so beloved to fans is that he always he always brings excellent entertainment when you watch manny pacquiao you're watching someone who's willing to just brawl till the end you're willing to watch someone who is willing to fight until they die that's manny pacquiao that kind of that kind of pure warrior spirit you know that you don't see in everybody that you don't see in every fighter you know someone who fights with his heart and his fists quite literally you said you said you don't even know me but you can't even fight in the states you can't even fight in the states because of me because of the opportunity you're shut the fuck up you better be grateful to i'm giving you the opportunity let's begin the q a with the members up on the dais ryan garcia i'll start with you. Well, what did he mean when he told ryan that he can't fight in the states because of me what does that mean respond to the i know i'm out of the loop but i mean what does that mean you know, it's waking me up. Uh, I just kind of looked into this like, you know, it's going to be a little exhibition. I'm going to enjoy the ride, enjoying the festivities in Japan. You know, it's New Year's. But now, now it's kind of waking the dragon up. Uh, I kind of just, you know, it's kind of making me a little excited to, to put a whooping on this dude. You know, uh, I'm looking to knock him out now. And uh, before it was just, you know, I thought it was going to be a relaxing family event. It's not anymore. You know, he's out here cussing. So, uh, if he thinks I need him, he's crazy. Um, again, uh, I don't need him, but uh, I'm just happy to bid a you know big event. Yeah, that's true. Ryan does not need this this man. He does not need this. Um, he does not need this supposed Japanese conqueror. Ryan is a, a household name in the boxing scene. As is, you know, when Ryan fights, people tune in. And even if they don't tune in, they definitely check up on it later. He's not somebody that you just forget fought at, at some time, you know. Even if you're a casual boxing fan, you know 
you know about him. Rukia. You're following his exploits. I'm a kickboxing world champion, but the boxing world really got to know you in July over those three rounds in the exhibition with the legend Manny Pacquiao. Okay, so he was the one. To the boxing world. It was three rounds. Hmm. I'm glad it was three rounds. Yeah. A dang near retired fighter like uh, retired fighter like Manny doesn't need to be going eight, ten, twelve rounds. It's not necessary. And you could argue that that's actually pretty disrespectful. You know. But again, Manny Pacquiao is a grown man and he does love the sport. He does love competing. That's something about someone, um, that kind of warrior spirit. You always want to test yourself. You know, he tells me that he doesn't... You know, that, that, that fire to... He will find to test your metal never goes away. You know, you could be 60, 70 years old and there's something in you that says, if only I was younger, if only I, if only I could step in there and compete with these guys, I know I could whoop them, you know? Ryan, maybe that question is better for you. What did you learn about Anpo as a fighter in that matchup with Manny Pacquiao in which you were ringside for? I think he was a, you know, young fighter trying to make a statement against a legend. You know, obviously he was uh, firing off shots trying to knock him out. Um, but it kind of inspired me, you know, it kind of inspired me watching that. Obviously my, Manny Packers, one of the people I looked up to as a fighter, uh, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So, uh, you know, now I'm here as a young fighter. You got to fight somebody with speed, power in his prime. So we'll see what he does. Um, I seen him getting beat up by Sean Strickland in a sparring match. I don't know if he... Oh, he was the one who sparred Sean too? He was getting beat up. So I think I'm going to do worse than that. Uh, wow. Because I did see that. I did see that Sean had gone uh, overseas and fought an Asian fighter. I don't know if... I don't remember. I didn't remember if it was... Uh, if he was Korean or J Japanese, but I knew that Sean went over and sparred uh, an Asian fighter. Um, and I did see that. And he did actually pretty well. That was him? He's pretty tall. I don't remember the guy that Sean sparred being so tall. But, um, you know, Obviously, I can't recall all the details, so it is what it is. But Ryan does have a point. You know, it's one thing fighting essentially an old man, a trained old man, a talented older man, um, someone who is still quite dangerous in, in everyday life when compared to 99% of the population. But, um, but uh, when it comes to trained athletes, trained professionals, Manny Pacquiao cannot compete anymore. He, he can't step up to uh, the cream of the crop that exists in this current era. He's too old and Father Time again uh, will not hesitate to remind you uh, of your deficiencies, your limitations that come with age. It just happens. It is what it is King. Okay. so i so i can understand when ryan says that he was kind of bothered that uh, umpo wanted to put a beat down on manny dis kind of disrespectfully there's no reason for it you know that you can beat him so you know fighter we know that sean strickland right don't look at me you know you're gonna get a whooping you're not good and uh we'll see i mean you're not Ooh. good but i'm gonna whoop you and knock you out in front of the world you're just big that's it you got big ass shoes on i'm gonna knock you out you got a stupid <laughs> and i'm gonna knock you out bro this uh, you may think this <laughs> said you have big shoes on gonna get knocked out and you're gonna see who the king is right? <laughs> He said he has big shoes on. <laughs> like that's supposed to be some kind of insult. <laughs> you know, I could just I can imagine someone taking it another angle. You know, like bring it on. You know, you know what big shoes means, Ryan. You know, <laughs> I got big meat. <laughs> Or something like that. A lot of <laughs> I bet my meat's bigger than yours, Ryan. <laughs> to look at. And then that starts a back and forth. <laughs> oh, man. This against Ryan, December 30th. We we'll always say that it's not so much about how you view him, but how they view you. 
right? So if he views Ryan as a great threat, which obviously he does, he's going to come out and he's going to fight. So you have to be mm -hmm. prepared about how he sees you, not necessarily how you see him. So you have to rise to the occasion also because I think he's going to come in and, you know, do his best to win the fight. I mean, I think he's going to train like he's training for a real fight. Everything is real. And so we have to be able to... Well, that's the best way to do it, isn't it? You never want to underestimate your opponent. Focus. And you never know when someone, even in an, in an exhibition match, you know, to, when a man's pride comes into play, you know, know things can start off cordial and, you know, but uh, once a man's pride comes into play, especially when being watched by the entire world, you never know when someone's going to turn things up and try to make a point, try to make a statement. So the best thing to do is always, regardless of what kind of event you're participating in, I'd imagine that the best psychological approach to it is to always train as if you're fighting um, someone uh, extraordinarily threatening. Someone who's actually um, trying to wrestle everything that you've got uh, from your hands. Of Rukia Anpo, Takayuki Nakao, how will your team prepare for the hand speed, the explosiveness of Ryan Garcia? えっと、中尾さんに質問です。え、ライアン全てまあ、スピードに関してはスピードとね、リング上で対峙してみないとわからない部分もあるんですけど、まあ、もちろんポジショニングとかとか、あの、しっかりあの、やっていきます。やっていきます。Such an interesting way to speak. For this fight, and as for his speed, such an interesting language. Actually, fight him and find out, but we can take care of that with positioning and angles. Ryan, back to you. Positioning and angles is a, a, a good thing to train for, because Ryan is very flat-footed. Uh, so you know, Ryan likes to sit down on his punches. He's not someone that likes to bounce around and move, um, move excessively. You know, he's very flat-footed. He likes to sit down on his punches. So constantly forcing him to reset. Got to give him, some, um, uh, give him hope. you know, is a good game plan. Constantly hat forcing him to move Come December, um, um, have is, is, is a perfect way to approach a, a fighter like him. This is uh, something new. I'm going to have to adjust. Have yeah, you, you don't want to be someone. But you don't want to be someone who likes to stand in front of uh, who likes to stand in front of Ryan. <laughs> you know, we're going to see his, his best effort. So I'm excited. I know this guy's going to come to fight. Uh, he seems very well, not unless he. So, like, I think what could happen. For you. So obviously he's trained like this, a world title fight. So I can't take this lightly. The thing about Ryan too that I've noticed though is that he does like to, if I'm remembering correctly, he does like to smother his punches. So Ryan's doesn't have the best discipline uh, when it comes to uh, keeping himself at in, at his optimal range. He does a really he has a really bad habit of stepping in when he already has an advantage. So he doesn't necessarily have the kind of world class discipline that you'd find from fighters uh, of the past. Uh, to not smother his punches and to maintain an advantage um, at range, especially when his opponent's against the ropes. If I'm remembering correctly, I'm trying to go back and just think about the way that Ryan fights. Rukia Ampo, when you're fighting Ryan Garcia, the speed we mentioned is a big part of it. So is that dangerous left hook. But when you look at his game, do you see any weak? Ryan's left hook is glorious. December Ryan's left hook is freaking glorious. It's just a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. It's the highlight of his uh, offensive arsenal for sure. For sure. ま、左ヒックのスピードに対して次、次
そこのチャンスをつきたいと思ってます。So as far as his left hook, yeah, the speed and power, I give it to him. He's got, he's got world class left hook. But I'm definitely aware of it. I'll be cautious of it, and I will be ready for that left hook. So that's all I can say for now, but I will be ready. As far as his weaknesses,、um, I think、um, due to his age, he's,、uh, he's unpolished. He gets, he gets sloppy at times. And I think、oh, wow. Around,、uh, drags by, I'll be able to capitalize on that. He's not wrong. That? that assessment isn't wrong. I, mean, I think Ampo in English means bozo. So he's a bozo. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh my gosh. What kind of response was that? Ryan, when the press release. Just completely just childish. Your opponent, joking. Eh, it's, en it's entertaining, though. And it's what you can't expect from someone with Ryan's personality. Show America who the real bad boy is. Bozo. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to call him back then. <laughs> I guess, like, we'll see, right? I mean, he, if he wants to be a bad boy, then be a bad boy. Now, I'm going to say, 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 自信過剰なやつをぶっ飛ばしてやるという意気込みで来てるんですけどそれに対して思いますかということに対してあの、まあ、よくわからない発言ですけども自分がバッドボーイならそれでいいんじゃないかとただ試合で見せますと俺が英語でアホならばお前は日本語でインチヒコゾーよライアン・ガルシアインチヒコゾーインチヒコゾーインチヒコゾーベイビー・ガルシアベイビー・フェイク・エリエット That's crazy, I didn't know that. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Come on now, Ryan. It seems to be an opinion from Ryan that maybe <laughs> you were disrespectful in the way that you fought Pacquiao and went for the knockout against the legend. How do you respond specifically to that statement? You would think that Ryan would do some kind of training to elevate his trash talk. He's not bad. I mean, he's entertaining, but I mean, what helps is, is the, the total package. You know, of course, it helps that he's a champion. It helps he's world class, but he's handsome. He has a nice smile. You know, he has natural,、uh, I guess, what the kids call riz. You know, so it kind of elevates even something that from somebody else would just be completely lame. You know, completely just. Wah, wah. But when Ryan says it, you know, it, it, it comes off as acceptable because of the total package. But you would think that with his kind of natural riz, that he would do a little bit of training to elevate his trash talk. As a professional, you, know, you have to put in all your efforts. Even a little bit. Make sure you put on a fun, entertaining fight for the fans and for everybody. So that was my professionalism speaking. And I'm actually, I actually regret that I couldn't finish him because that's my attitude towards. Uh, any confirmed fight, and that's how we train with my,、uh, with my training、uh, trainer, with Mr. Nakao. So, even this fight, more over the, the motivation I had on knocking Pacquiao out, I will knock this guy out and I will finish him in, as a professional. I don't think he knocked Manny Pacquiao out, though. Because I, I, I saw the highlights of that, and Manny, it, that went to a decision. I think the three rounds went to a decision. Manny didn't get knock, knocked out. I don't even, did he, I don't even think he, get, he got dropped, if I remember correctly. How much are you adding to that reputation, taking. Of course, I could be wrong. The power that Ryan Garcia has. えー、と坂木原氏に質問です、えー、と坂木原さんは、えー、と日本の大みそかに、えーまあ、本当に伝統となるような、えー、イベントを定着させることができましたで今回も大きなイベントになると思うんですけれども、えー、今回のこの試合を追加することによってその伝統にどれくらいの、えー、付加価値というかどれくらいのものが追加されると思われますか、まああのーライジにとっては10回目の大晦日2015年以来10回目の大晦日になるんですけど多分今回が世界中から注目されるという世界中世界中が最もあの最も,もされる大会になると思いますこれまでメイウェザーも出てますしフロイドもあのあの大晦日に出たことがあるんですけどその時以上に世界の以上に増すと思いますしまあ世界中でその日人たちが格闘技を見るならライジンを見る、ライアンとアンポの試合を見るっていうような、そんな日になればいいなと思ってます。なと思ってます。This will be our 10th year, just speaking for Ryzen, this will be our 10th event at the end of the year for Ryzen. 
And um, I believe that you know by adding this this card, this will be the most uh, watched Ryzen event in all ten years because of this star power. So obviously, you know, we've had Floyd fight. Uh, we can skip that. Combat sports in Japan, New Year's Eve every year. Uh, a venue in the Saitama Super Arena, which has hosted... Saitama Super Arena. Maybe the Madison Square Garden of that side of the world. How much has that hit you, that this is a special exhibition with a lot of potential for fireworks, but that you're really putting your footprint in some historical points and bringing your star to a new part of the world? Yeah, it's an honor to fight in Japan, honestly. Um, it's pretty cool. I know in uh, the manga, uh, the anime, Hajime no Ippo, uh, the big arena in that uh, story is uh, something they call uh, Gorakuen Hall, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Gorak Gorakuen Hall. I wonder if that's a real place. I got to look that up. That's really cool to get such a massive event overseas like that. Um, Japanese fans are very respectful and they're very passionate. Uh, Japanese combat sports fans. Um, so it's definitely going to be a great experience for Ryan. It's definitely going to be really, really good for him. The thing that makes Japanese sport, a combat sports fan so interesting too is as far as I can as far as I know they're also very loyal you know very very loyal to the bitter end you know american combat sports fans we have a really bad habit of being wishy-washy we're very um fickle you know uh someone goes on a tear a fighter can go on a 10 win uh, uh, 10 fight win streak and we we love them and we sing their praises they lose once and all of a sudden people say oh he's not as good as we thought he was he's washed you know, he was a hype job. You know, com American combat sports fans were very wishy-washy. We, um... We're very quick to kind of uh, jump off the bandwagon of something that we were earlier proclaiming to be the real deal. It's interesting just the way that we view success and results as Americans versus uh, other combat sports fans from different cultures. It, it's a it's a my it, it's it's a way that we view um, winning, our opinion of of winning, and um, how much uh, honor and respect um, fighting gives a fighter even if they don't win and you know it's it's the the american mentality is almost like uh, if you don't win you're nothing but with my fight you know if you don't win i don't respect you regardless of what kind of effort you 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 demonstrate um you you display if you don't win eh, i don't gotta waste my time being a fan of you you know that's kind of it's the it's your hand it's it's almost the mentality that america that a lot of american combat sports fans have the difference between Japanese combat sports fans, as far as I know, um, is that they don't view winning life. They don't view a fighter's worth um, and the amount of uh, attention and the amount of um, respect and loyalty they would give to that fighter. It's not predicated on wins alone. Like uh, winning is fantastic. Winning is great. We all love a winner. Um, but they kind of the way that they look at at their mentality on winning. Um, and overcoming struggle and demonstrating courage and honor, it's just, it's, it's different than Americans. It's because I am Rukia Ampo, that's why. And I will show my true samurai spirit in Japan, and I will expose this fake king. So everybody, please cheer for me. Thank you. Ryan Garcia, the final word goes to the king. We've been long awaited your return to the fight game. What should we expect December 30th? Over eight two-minute rounds when you and Rukia Ampo touch gloves. Well, I want to thank Ryzen, Famio, Golden Boy, you, the whole team, everybody here. Uh, before I say my closing statements, thank you guys for everything. Uh, yeah, man, you're going to get what you get with me. You know, exciting fight. You're going to see a finish. And I'm just going to end Ampo.
Lampo's going to be done, and we're not going to talk about him no more. That's it. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> move on to the next and have a great time in Japan, New Year's. That's going to be great. I'm going to have some good ramen. I'm going to say hi to all the amazing Japanese fans. That's like the sport capital of the world. They love, you know, comedy. He's going to have some good ramen. And we're going to show, you know, what we're made of. You know, we're different. So that's it. <laughs> That's just about as funny as if he would have said, I'm going to have some good sushi. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. もうこの試合が終わったら誰も担保についてああ、ライン、ライン、ライン。勝って自分が次に進むだけ。そして、え、お味噌か日本で素晴らしい、え、あそこたくさん楽しい思いをして、美味しいラーメンを食べて。It's kind of it, it, it's funny cuz it kind of you don't mean to say it in an insulting fashion, but it's just the, the thing that you get from Ryan when he speaks is just simple-minded. Like that's that's the kind of but it's funny because it's in a good way. It's in, it's in a way that, you know, captivates people and wants them co to continue watching. Because it's, it's very similar to watching an impending train wreck, you know, kind of, as far as his personality, his part, as far as his social interactions are concerned, as far as who he is socially. As Ryzen Fighting Federation and Fan Mio come together. It's a part of what makes him interesting to watch when he has to speak to his opponents and, you know. Yeah, he's definitely big. He's a big boy. But you know what they say, as far, especially as far as world-class boxing is concerned, size is only one factor, and it's often not the biggest. Let me rewind that real quick. Let me rewind that real quick because I don't, I personally don't like Ryan's habit of using the kind of uh, shoulder roll defense. I don't think that it fits his style. Um, I mean, it worked with Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya has elements of um, uh, Ryan's style. Ryan is not as refined as Oscar De La Hoya. Um, Ryan, Oscar De La Hoya also had a monstrous left hook, um, just phenomenal left hook. And they, they share similarities in fighting styles, but, um, and it worked with Oscar because Oscar trained with, um, Floyd Mayweather senior and Floyd Mayweather senior, um, arguably perfected that aspect of defense, uh, in his son. And so naturally he was going to try to get Oscar to utilize it, uh, to give him longevity. Um, especially against opponents who might have had more power, um, were more offensive. But for Ryan, I just can't, I just, I don't know, I just can't get it out of my mind that um, that aspect of his defense, I, I don't know, there's something about it that I don't like. Something about it that I don't like. I mean, you could argue that... Um, it is a natural level of progression for him defensively because he is more flat-footed. When compared to Oscar, that's a big difference between him and Oscar. Oscar is more of a pure boxer. I would categorize Oscar as definitely a boxer puncher, but um, you know he's more towards the pure boxer uh, side of the spectrum. He's a mover. He likes to use movement and angles, and um, you know Ryan is a bit more static. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I don't know. There's, there's nothing too much that you can, um, that you can gleam from watching stuff like this because.
they've still got a lot of training to do. They're not in ideal form, especially Ryan. Ryan Ryan isn't in ideal form. He's still got a lot of work to do in training camp to get to get ready for this. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens.